He's Yahoo Sports National College columnist. His latest column, Why the NCAA Tournament's Expansion to 68 Teams Has Not Worked Out. Pat Forty joins us on the program, ready to go to Duke and North Carolina on Saturday. Good morning, Pat. Good morning, Dan. I hope Zion Williamson is ready to go to Duke and North Carolina on Saturday. Well, he'll be there. He just won't be in uniform, I don't think. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it's been become a real buzzkill to the most interesting story in college basketball here. Uh, see if he hopefully he's back next week for the ACC tournament. And I'm wondering the importance of how Duke plays in that ACC tournament because if Virginia and North Carolina have number one seeds in Gonzaga – you know, what's the chance Duke is not a number one seed come tournament time? Oh, it's it's escalating, I think. Uh, every every game he doesn't play, and they look as bad as they did. They were really lucky to beat a terrible Wake Forest team without him. And, you know, if there's any chance he's not 100% for the NCAA tournament, if I'm selection committee, I'm looking and saying, this team isn't that great without him. Uh, so I think he needs to play and needs to play – at a level that suggests that he's he's back, you know. Um, so I think there's a little bit of sense of urgency there. Obviously, you know, yeah, they can get away with it without playing him Saturday in Chapel Hill, uh, although that would be a shame to, to basically play 30 seconds of your entire career against North Carolina. Yeah. Um, but then the ACC tournament, he absolutely needs to play. All right, handicap this. Virginia, number one seed. Gonzaga, number one seed. North Carolina have to beat Duke to be a number one seed? I think so. Um, you know, I think right now, I, I mean, I I still would have Duke on the one line just because I think that, that they, they've lost one game with their with their full team. But if, if North Carolina beats them, then I would probably put North Carolina up there, and then it's a Kentucky, Tennessee, LSU, Taffy pull probably for the fourth <laughs> one if, if uh, Duke's out of the picture. What's going on with the SEC with basketball? <laughs> they become a basketball well, conference here. How about that? It's uh, It's been wildly entertaining. I mean, a crazy, crazy season. Uh, LSU, you know, all they have to do is beat last place Vandy on Saturday, and they win the league, at least to share the league in the, the number one seed for the, uh, for the SEC tournament. And they've played seven games in overtime. I mean, it doesn't matter who they play. Every game's going down to the wire. Uh, they've had, you know, uh, these crazy finishes, their head coach is being subpoenaed for to go to the to federal trial in April. Uh, it has not been dull with LSU. And then, you know, Tennessee and Kentucky have taken turns blowing each other out. I think after that, the league's pretty ordinary. But at the top with these three, it's really interesting. I'm going to go to that tournament next week, and I'm very interested to see those three teams play. What about the, what happened to the Pac-12, or the artist formerly known as? Ooh. <laughs> it's it's a train wreck it's it's worse in basketball than it was in football which is saying something you know i think they've had a a real coaching lull uh obviously they've had a recruiting lull um there's just not as many good players out there you know arizona cratered after the uh the federal basketball scandal implicated them heavily and they, a lot of their recruits that went elsewhere would have been there this year uh, USC is massively underachieved. UCLA is massively underachieved. Oregon uh, had Bull Bull, the, the seven foot one uh, player, Manute Bull's son, who's supposed to be really good, who got hurt early. Uh, I mean, everybody stinks. It's a bad, bad league. They'll be lucky if they get two bits. What do you hear about UCLA, their coaching search? Not much at this point. It stayed pretty vague and pretty quiet. Um, you know, I think. Obviously, there's been a lot of speculation about Luke Walton um, because it, you, for either of two jobs, because Arizona could be opening as well. Uh, you know, it's not exactly the good ship lollipop in uh, Los Angeles. And so if he's out there and if he wants to go to college, I think he could have his pick between those two. There's been some people that have pushed for uh, Rick Bettino. I don't see that happening at UCLA, but there's been some people that have lo at least lobbied his, lobbed his name out there. Yeah, I talked to uh, a guy whose job is to find coaches for jobs. So that's his job. And I was talked to him about Tony Bennett going to UCLA. What do you think about that possibility? Well, I mean, that would be a humongous home run, I think, for UCLA. Uh, you know, his style of play is not the most wildly entertaining. And, 
they have been massive March flops. But still, if you want to win 30 games, which I would think everybody does, and, you know, win Pac-12 titles, that's not a bad place to start. Uh, and he was very successful out there when he was at Washington State. You know, I – he, he, I don't know how much really stock to put into that whole, you know, line of thinking that if you're in Los Angeles and you want to get attention, you've got to be entertaining. Uh, he wouldn't fit that mold either personally or stylistically for his team, but I think he'd win a lot of games. Yeah, but USC style is supposed to be entertaining, and that doesn't matter. Like, I, I, right. I, I just want you to, at this point, I think UCLA's got to realize that they're not UCLA of old. And these, you know, these coaches are looking at this going, I, I don't need to go there. Uh, I can do this at Virginia and still get paid well. And, uh, you know, I don't need to follow in the John Wooden footsteps here. Sure. Yeah. And there, there's still people around that, that think that, you know, John Wooden was coaching there, you know, three weeks ago. Uh, it's not the case. And quite frankly, the last successful coach they had, Ben Howland, yeah. Played a pretty played a pretty bend it ball kind of style, you know, where they won games sixty to fifty five. So if you want to win, they could do a lot worse. But yeah, that job has has lost a lot of luster. It's not the same as what it was. Uh, but a lot of people really don't kind of realize that and still think that you know UCLA should be able to snap its fingers and win national championships. It hadn't happened in a long, long time. If I gave you Duke or the field, knowing Zion's going to play and be healthy. I'd probably still take the field. I would have been close to taking Duke versus the field a few weeks ago. Uh, I don't know. I, I got to see it. I think I have to see it here before I fill out my bracket and say, I'll take Duke versus 67 other teams. So if, if he is healthy and he is, he can just, he, he's back to just tearing the rim down and, you know, jumping over the backboard and doing all the great things he does. I, I would feel very comfortable picking him to win the tournament Still don't know whether I want to pick them at the exclusion of everyone else. Yeah, I would take the field. I just think that, you know, that out, outside shooting, if uh, if you can, kind right. of, you know, contain them and make them shoot that that jumper, then uh, you can knock them off. And and we know on a neutral site, uh, somebody somebody's going to have a great night shooting against them, and then force them to shoot threes, and they just can't shoot those threes. So, I I would take the field. I I am curious though. Yeah. Um, you said the NCAA tournament's expansion to 68 teams has not worked out. I did. Why? Uh, you know, I just, well, first of all, I think it was, it was a complete cop out just to, to bow to the pressure from power conferences to say our seventh, eighth and ninth place teams need to make this tournament. So let's, uh, let's, let's put them in. That's really what it's done. I crunched some numbers on it and 56% of those first four bids you know, not counting the 16 seats that they make play against each other instead of letting them get their chance to be UMBC. Uh, but the other games, 56% of them are from Power Five, Power Six conferences, if you include the Big, Big East. Uh, that's a higher percentage than the overall Power Six representation in the bracket. So where have those bids gone? Basically, that's who they've gone to, to, you know, a USC team that's no good, to a Seton Hall team that's no good, to a... Uh, a you know, mid-level, Big Ten, Pac-12, or SEC, whatever. Uh, I don't want to see those teams in the tournament. Uh, that's not helping make the tournament any better to me. I don't need games on Tuesday and Wednesday to make the tournament better. I don't need uh, those teams, you know, then playing and scurrying off somewhere else. The tournament was perfect at 64 to me. Expanding to 68 was just rewarding mediocrity. Safe travels there for uh, Duke, North Carolina, and uh, we'll catch up with you during the tournament. Thank you, Pat. All right. Thank you, Dan. That's Pat Forty, Yahoo Sports National College columnist. For more Dan Patrick Show, tune to Audience Channel 239 on DirecTV or download the Dan Patrick Show app.